awful. Too bright. Good. It's better, better, better. COVID here. Hi, everybody. Oh, let's see. Participants one. Mr. Banjo, he wants dinner. Okay, you have time. We have time for dinner.
Hi. Hello. Oh, I like the background, Connie. <laughs> Thank you. I um I have to um the guy that Peter, the guy that's leading Peter, you know Peter, um, is leading our um jam groups on Monday and Tuesdays. Um, he's not going to be around, so I have to take over. So I ha I was playing with um, the Zoom la the other night and saw that you had uh, backgrounds that you could choose. So I thought uh, this was pretty cool. I, I like that. That's yeah, it's on the Zoom site. I don't remember where, but you can you can you can have it too. I, I would yeah. I want to be like um. I want to be on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, there you go. I think they had one that kind of looked like that. Yeah. They had a they had a, some kind of beachy one. They had three or four or five maybe to choose from. Hi, everybody. Hi. That looks like 2001: A Space Odyssey. That's <laughs> I am the resident alien. Is the baby floating in space there? <laughs> yes, definitely. Keep your eye out. He'll be passing soon. I, I rewatch that film about once every three years. You got to, yeah, it's just classic. Yeah, the, um, it makes modern <laughs> you know, computing graphics look cheesy. And they were just using little plastic models floating in dark space. Wow. All right, then. So we've got two of us here. Very good. And uh, we've got an Irish time, which means not just yet. But if anybody's got any questions, um, if anybody's got any questions, now's a good time. Yeah, I've got one on uh, Danny Boy. It's got an F sharp in there, I think, um, which is a half covered note. And I can't hit it to save my soul. Okay, um, we're playing Danny Boy in D, right? Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying checking to see which one. Uh, it was the I think it was in. I think it might have been in G. Okay. Yeah, you have an F sharp on your whistle. Um, it was it was the one you gave us in G. You gave us. All of the notes are there. Okay, but um, on the second, this is the one in, uh, in G that you gave us. You have to half hole it. It it has a half hole. Oh, that'd be on the maybe the C natural. Um, it says D, it's, uh, I see, oh, D, D sharp, I guess is. Oh, you can ignore that D sharp. D sharp. That, D sharp. Okay. That, um, Just ignore it. Right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, that's, that's a matter of taste. Okay. Um, All right. I shall not worry about it. I would not worry about that one just now. Um, All right, thank you. Um, but um, I, uh, with the half hole thing, is that, so that's when you want to go a half note up or down or something, right? Right. We'll talk about that today. Yeah, okay. We start there. I think, you know, we've got a forum at 6.02. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the scale. And actually, I've got a little uh, keyboard that will make this conversation a little bit easier because it's easier to see than it is to talk about. Or wait a minute. Hey, buddy, hold up. Yeah, a little bit of music theory. I'll leave you. Everybody at the same time. So we look at a whistle, right? And one of the things you'll notice is that some of the holes are bigger than the others. 
and you, you should kind of go, hmm, I wonder what's going on. Okay, what's going on is when you have, when you're uncovering a big hole, it's like moving from here to here. Well, you'll notice there's a note in the middle. Here to here, there's a note in the middle. Mm -hmm. Whereas from here to here, you don't have a note in the middle. Mm -hmm. So on the whistle, this is what's happening when it's a small hole. Mm -hmm. And this uh. is when it's a big hole. Now I'm gonna have to turn this around so I can figure out where D is on this guy. I'm not a piano player, so that would be D. I think, is that D? Correct, yes. That's D. Okay. So, yep, that's the one. Now, here's a, we're going to start on C first, because I think it's a little easier to see. Okay, sorry for the pun. So here's <laughs> D. And the next note, notice how far away it is. There's a note between C and D. So there's, there's, there's your C sharp. And now there's a note between E and F, right? Or E? D and E? I'm sorry, C, D, and E. Thank you. E. And E and F are right next to each other. And F, G, A, B, and then B and C are right next to each other. Now there's a pattern to this. This is a, that was a major scale. So we're going to come back to C, and this basically this is a whole step where you're skipping a step. So it's whole step. You don't have to remember. I'm going to show it to you. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. Half step. That's a major. Pattern. Don't bother to memorize that. Don't write it down. Don't worry about it. But what I want you to know is that pattern is the same for every single key. So if you start on D, D, whole step, and you go, C was whole step, whole step. So D has to be whole step, whole step, F sharp. D, E, there was a whole step. Now we have to go a whole step again, so we're skipping F sharp. Mm -hmm. The next one's a half step. There's G. And that, that, that was a whole step. A, etc. Okay. So we whistle in the key of D. And that kind of explains a little bit about um, keys. So when you're half holding, for example, um, half holding, say, like from an F sharp to a G, there is no note between these two. F sharp and G, no, see the tiny hole? You're uncovering a yep. tiny hole. So you're only going up half step. There's there is some there's there's space in there, but there is no note. Okay. Now you would have a D, a D sharp, right? E, F natural, F sharp. Okay. Yeah. No, there is no note between E and F, right? Okay. Now, I broke one of my rules because like, wait a minute, John, that's a big hole. And you're going from F, you're going from E to F sharp. Okay, that was a full step. Okay. But if you wanted it natural, now how to do it is a better que is a different question. And there's no one way to do this. Um, it, it depends on your hands. It depends on the whistle. What tends to work for me, for example, for that note that you're working on, I find it pretty easy on this whistle to kind of brush my finger down along the side of this one and just kind of feel the hole. I can hit that that sharp pretty well on this whistle just by doing that. Okay. Um, the next one I have a tendency to do it this way. I cover it the other way. Okay, and I was going, you're going side to side. I was going top to bottom, I think. Um, and um, another very common way to do this, it doesn't work with my hands, is like this, is to kind of uncover it that way. Okay. That's very common. Okay. And last, I just watched a video last week of uh, an introductory video where a woman was talking about half holding and tricks. And 
she was doing it like she was doing that on the uh, what is it the A like G sharp, and and you know she's doing she was just like straightening her finger out, but I can't my fingers won't go backwards like that, and I can't okay. roll like that. I start to lose the hole. Okay. I don't, right. I don't use half holes at high speed, except the the D sharp. I'll use that a lot of times on hornpipes and things. Um, there are some fingerings. We're not going to go into those today. This is maybe we can touch on this in the next workshop. For anyone, and you can find them on the internet. There are some alternative ways of getting some of the other chromatic notes at you know at speed, but it's different on every whistle. A cross fingering that works on one whistle, say for you know, G sharp doesn't work on a different whistle for G-sharp. So that's one of those things you just kind of have to end up figuring out for yourself. Okay. Thank you. That's just a little bit about scales. Um, we're going to come back at your scale and a little bit of how they relate to each other, but I wanted to go into our um, teaching this workshop is helping me to remember my own advice, which is to start with things like scales. One of the challenges when you're um, at every level of music, is there's so many things happening at the same time. Um, it's easy to forget the really basic things. And in this case, and I just heard my computer beep at us, so I'm gonna get close my email so it doesn't beep, but that's better. All right, um, it's things like breathing, getting that, that full breath of air. So we're gonna just play, we're just gonna go up our, our D scale, we're just gonna go all the way up and come all the way down. I'm going to try to do it with one breath and we'll see how we do. So nice. Is it, are we all muted? Is that me? I think we are. Let's see. Lori's coming in. Hey there, Lori. Hey, Lori. So here we go. Two, three. I just realized I didn't have the microphone over here, so that should probably, uh, you might end up having to turn me down on your end with the whistle. Now that I've moved the microphone, it's probably going to be quite a bit louder. I'll try it again. One thing you want to notice when you're doing that scale is a lot of times that high note that I mean, that can be kind of a real shrieker depending on the whistle. Um, when I'm going up the scale like that, I can do one continuous stream of air and notice as you're going up the whistle that you have to keep blowing a little bit harder with each successive note up the scale. And when you get here on the high notes that That those three notes, it tends to be noticeably harder. Often that top note, if you're having trouble getting that top note, if it's squawking and squeaking, like, it's not enough air. It's not enough pressure. And you need to hit, you need to get it like, excuse me. Believe it or not, folks, I need to take this call because it might be Indiana unemployment. They haven't paid me in two months, and I've been waiting for this call for six weeks. Hello? Hello? Hello, Ellen. My name is John Kennedy, and I'm delighted to be speaking with you. Um, I've been waiting for this call for a long time, but I am in the middle of teaching an online music lesson to a dozen people can is there can i call could you call me back in an hour that's me yeah thank you thank you ellen bye-bye <laughs> 
Indian unemployment hasn't paid me two months for an unresolved issue. And I've been waiting for that phone call for two months. Wow, I'm not sure I would have let him go. <laughs> um, I want to be here. And uh, we would have forgiven you, John. We would have forgiven you. Yes. Um, I want to be here. Thank you. Okay. The, um, that, that's just money. This is music. This is more important to me. <laughs> it really is. And that'll, I'm, I'm not worried about it. It'll work itself out. All right. So we're, we're going to play the, uh, we'll play through the G scale now. So now we're going to be practicing that C natural. One more time. Okay. Now we're going to go through another scale exercise. And one of the reasons I want to be here instead of there is it's been quite a day and I've had too many things going on and I've been really tense. And as soon as I start reminding myself to breathe and I'm playing music, I feel so much better. Just whew, nice deep breaths. We're going to uh, do a, this is a technical exercise. We're going to play octaves where it'll be. No, notice that little, that little edge. again. Now you notice on this whistle, this is my, uh, this is a Colin Goldie. These things are about $400, but it still squawks. Watch. <laughs> Trying to get into that high D, this whistle, that's what it does. But so so that's why on some instruments, getting that high D this way Nice, clean entrance. So here we go. Really good exercise there because you really notice then the difference in air pressure required between that low B In my case, particularly on this whistle, I, I need to put a little I just use my tongue and create just a little wall of pressure. I'm actually putting my tongue right covering the opening of the whistle. So when I really and then kind of building up a little bit of pressure in my mouth. So when I release my tongue, there's an instant change of pressure in the whistle. So I get into that high note cleanly. That takes a bit of practice. Some whistles are much easier than others for doing that. All right. That little. Right. That little technique. Now, that same technique that can be used a lot musically. So it's not just sometimes a way to get in. Um, Michael Russell, who um, I sent you one of his videos. Um, oh, there's a couple other videos I want to send you. A fellow named Brian Finnegan, who's one of the, just one of the extraordinary musicians in this music. If you listen to NPR, every now and then you'll hear some of Brian Finnegan's whistle music. It has a very modern kind of sound. He does a lot of using tonguing to get these very, very precise effects. Although I'm not, I'm not a Brian Finnegan guy, so I, I don't know how to do these things so well myself. Yes, hey, John.
it's Steve. Um, uh, so I noticed there's, is there several ways to play the same note? Like you could, there's like some fingering, you can play the same note by changing your fingering, is that? Um, for the most part, like if you wanna play a low D, that's it. And yeah. That's play an e yeah. And that's how you play an F sharp and that's how you play a G. Like the C natural, the C natural, you can play it this way, you can play it that way, you can yeah. play it this way, and you can half hole it. Wow, okay. So, yeah, and it's all the same note. Well, it's, it is. Close? It, it's close. <laughs> and some whistles, this, the open C sharp will be a little flat or a little sharp. That, that just tends to be an issue with whistles. And in some whistles that like, if you play the C natural this way, it will be sharp. It won't really be a C natural. So you have to do that. And then of course, half holding it here just gives you a different sound. So once you get into the detail of it, that becomes part of your personal style. And you get a little farther down the road, you just have to kind of figure out what your whistle does, right? Um, like this whistle, is pretty good with the C naturals and the C sharps in terms of them being where you want them to be. That's what you get for four hundred dollars, right? But there are eight dollar whistles that are just as good that way. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to show you um, one more exercise. We're going to go through our scale again, and this time we're going to go scales, and we're just going to do this. Now, what you're what you're trying to do? Uh, imagine that this is. A, uh, a red hot skillet. You know how you want, you know, how you touch something when you want to know if it's hot, but you know that if you like put your finger on it, it's going to be burned if it's actually hot. So you kind of go like wet your finger and go like that. That's kind of what you're trying to do. You're trying to get it to go. That's a better exercise than I realized, and one that I need to be doing, because there's um, everyone will have f some fingers that are stronger and weaker at doing things, and the, it, the fingers I'm having trouble with is right here and right here, and particularly on my flute. So I tend to when I'm working on tunes, I'll pick a, I'll pick a tune that has that in it. What I need to do is just sit here and go. Just sit and just, just keep going, keep repeating it. All right, um, have a little go at Come By The Hills, shall we? And I'm going to pull up the music so that I'm actually playing what I gave you rather than what's in my head. Because I've got the song in my head and I think there's a couple of notes that are a little different uh, the way I've got it in my own mind. Okay. All right. I'm going to play the, the little cup, the two lead notes that aren't written here in the music that just to get us into the soon. So the, the first note you've got on your page is that B. Two, three.
That is just such, such a lovely, lovely melody. Um, couple of couple of spot. Well, first, um, any questions about it? Are you having trouble with any particular phrases or, you know, something that you'd like to work on? A couple of little. Just make it sound like you. What's that? I just can't make it sound like you. That's the problem. <laughs> In the long run, that the first thing you do as a student is you try to copy, which is perfect. That's exactly what you're supposed to be doing right now. And then later, you don't want to make it sound like me. You want to make it sound like you. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about what might what that might be. Now, some of it I, is the way I'm, I have the music in my head. I have the song in my head. So I'm not playing it like a metronome off the page, right? Because what's on the page is, Like this, right? And I'm swinging it a little bit. Yeah. Like the, um, that little step up. I'm changing the timing of that a little bit. It's like, yeah, da da da. Instead of da 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 da, I'm going, yeah, da da da. Right, so I'm kind of dragging out that thing and that making the a little, just a little shorter to give it a little lift into the note. The other thing I'm doing is there's a couple of places where I'm sliding a little bit. That to me, that's the the easiest place to get a really nice sounding slide is into the B. So wherever you've got a B, so you can go. Now the slide, the way I'm doing the slide, there's a bunch of ways to do it. I'm doing, I'm going like that. I've always found it kind of effective for me to kind of slide off the note like that. So I'm starting here, right? And just sliding. Now, what can also work is doing this, coming that way. It can also work going that way. You know, any way that you kind of gently come off the hole. What's always worked for me, I kind of do this. That's just, how, that's, just, that's just what works for me. So you've got that, yeah. The way, the way a singer would sing that note, the singer wouldn't just go, calm. The singer would go, calm. You kind of swell, you kind of swell into it. Now what I'm doing there, I'm going da da da. I'm using my tongue there. So I'm, I'm, I'm providing just a little bit of syncopation in that spot. Now there, you've got the two Ds. You can go, so we're in the third measure. Now what, what I'm doing is, I'm cutting that, that D, so I'm going. See that just little movement there? I'll exaggerate it. So let's just play the first line. We'll just play through the first line and kind of look at some of the stylistic little things I'm doing. Now notice I hit the... There's another thing you can do that I have not been doing is you can add a little bit of vibrato so that you're holding that G, you can go, Watch this. Can you hear that little ringing around the note? Now you can also.
that's not something I do a lot of, but the better players you'll all see when they're, when they were holding a note, they'll just do this above one of the holes below it to create vibrato on that note. So let's play that first line again. Well, let's just practice this for a little while. Okay, now we're going to do that, and we're just going to go on and play the rest of the first line. I just did something new. I slid up from this note instead of sliding up from this one. So listen to the difference. Instead of Again. Now there's one other little detail in here that I'm that I'm throwing in. You might you might have noticed I'm doing a cut and a, and on that little descending run I'm going. Try to do it like a. When I come down to this A, I'm cutting it from above. Now these are these are details. Hey, question on that, Steve. Yeah. Uh, you know how to do that, or you just you just play around with it or something? It's not written in the music, right? No, um, you can find you can find sheet music where they've written all that stuff in. Um, I sent you a link to I think I did to uh, an organization. Uh, it's a website called thesession.org. It has t tens of thousands of Irish tunes in it. It'll have two, three, four, ten, fifteen settings of a tune, and in some cases, someone will have transcribed exactly what someone played. So all the cuts, all the tips, everything will be in there. I find that to be disorienting. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming. <laughs> it's, information. It's, it's still very helpful to do it. And at some point, um, I've done this, where I've, I, I like what a particular musician is doing so much, I want to know how he's getting it. So you listen for every single cut, every tip, and you try to figure out what they're doing. And, and the more you do that, the more you're able to just hear it and know what they're doing without having to really work at it. Um, I had a question. Yeah. Do, um, do people do vibrato with their, uh, their breath also? Yes. Yes. You, you, you use anything and everything that works for you. Um, I mentioned uh, Packy Manasaran a couple of weeks ago, the fella that when in his 80s, his fingers wouldn't do what he wanted them to do anymore. So he started using his tongue and his vibrato in order to get the effects that he wanted. And it was still magnificent whistle playing. So this is one of those absolutely anything works. Anything that gets the sound that you want is perfectly OK. There's a style of playing that comes out of Sligo. It's more for flute, but it's also for whistle. Uh, it's called the rushing style. 
and it's largely based on breath. It's like, it's just this real kind of surging, like a freight train. Um, Larry Nugent out of Chicago is one of the great whistle players and flute players in this music. Larry plays in the rushing style, you know, just like pushing from the diaphragm, this just real surging, pushing sound. So yeah, that's definitely fair game. Definitely fair game. Kind of going back to Steve's point. Um, the first thing to do is just copy. You listen to the way someone else is playing it and you just try to hear what's there. That's a, that's the first step is being able to hear, like if a guy is going, to be able to actually hear where each of those little ornaments is. That's taken me forever. And I'm still not that good at it. I know I'm not that good at it because I notice the difference between myself and say Teresa Kubiak and Nolan and Liam in the detail of their playing. When I was mixing our last CD, uh, The Whiskey of Truth, we've got a couple of tracks where uh, Teresa and Liam are playing like side by side and they're playing in unison. So they're playing the same notes. And I was stunned to find that every ornament, every cut, every finger hit, every, they were all the same. So they were hearing each other and they, they'd never sat and talked about it. They're just, they're much farther down the road at, as instrumentalists. I'm more of a guitar player and a singer, of course. And the whistle is something, even though I taught them the whistle, they are so far beyond me as, student, as, as musicians. They are way, 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 way past, like to the point where I don't really even fully understand what they're doing. <laughs> to the point where I can't, I struggle to hear the detail. I was with Teresa about, oh, this is about six months ago, and we're listening to a recording, and I'm going, what was that? And she says, oh, that was a double cut reverse roll. I'm going, what? And then she shows me exactly what it was. And I was like, could you slow that down? And she slows it down half speed. And I'm still going, what? What? Could, could you like, let me videotape it. So I'm, I'm, I videotape her and then I slow it down more to figure out like, 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 oh. And once I'd done that, then I back, and then at full speed, I could hear it. But I had to teach my ear what it was to even be able to hear what was happening. And then engineer exactly between tongue and fingers, how they were getting that effect. So you dive down the rabbit hole, Steve, and you just take on whatever the next challenge is that's within your reach. And I've got a couple of very specific technical challenges that I'm working on on the whistle right now because they're within my reach. That double cut reverse roll, not within my reach right now. Yeah, maybe I'll get there. Okay, so let's keep going with this tune and we'll dive into a little bit more detail. Let's see, we've got 20 minutes. I, want to, I do want to introduce another tune today. Uh, this will be your to the next tune. We're going to spend a little more time in this, but the next tune is a polka. So this will be your first step into what, what would mostly be considered like actual traditional Irish dance music, right? Jigs, reels, polkas, hornpipes. The, the, this series of workshops is basically more of just like an introduction, how to make the notes, scales, and that sort of thing. But we'll start off, we'll, we'll get you going with a polka in a couple of minutes. So let's, let's go through this again. Just a little more detail. We're just going to play through the whole tune, nice and slow. encourage you to just not necessarily that tune if you love that tune and I, I do then play that tune um, play a melody or a tune that you really want to play that that the emotion of wanting like you know you're listening to someone else play it and you want that 
and the joy that's in you when you're doing it feeds into your brain and you're much more likely to learn and remember. You're also more likely to practice. You know, so one of the goals for me is to get a student to the point where they're bringing something to me and saying, I want to learn this tune. Rather than me saying, this is the tune you're going to learn next. Um, there, there's a certain relationship back and forth. Sometimes I'll give a tune to somebody because it has techniques in it that they're ready to learn. But it still works best when the student is picking the music in the end. But with this many students, we can't be having you pick, picking all the tunes. Let's see, Nancy's here. Hope she hasn't been waiting too long. Hello, Nancy. Hope you haven't been waiting too long. All right, so, so we got a polka, and I, I think this is called Riches Full of Stitches, but I'll have to get the name, and I'll get you the finger charts and all that stuff. Um, you know, probably get that done maybe Saturday. So uh, first, I'll play through the tune so you get a chance to listen to it. So there it is. A couple of things about Irish dance tunes. Um, for those of you who have a little bit of musical background in them, every rule is meant to be broken, but this one's pretty solid. They come in eight bars, eight bars at a time. Generally speaking, you'll repeat eight bars, and then the next section will be eight bars, and that gets repeated. And then you come back around again to the beginning of the tune. In a set of tunes, you would play it two or three times, and then you would go to the next polka. And typically, there'll be at least two, sometimes three or four polkas in a row. Same thing for jigs and reels. So um, typically, many of the simple tunes like this one, you'll hear a four-bar statement. Now, if you don't know what a bar is, forget I said it. Don't worry about it. Just listen. That's four bars. It's kind of a, it's a sentence. And then you're going to repeat that. With a slightly different ending. That's very typical. And learning how to hear this music is basically learning to recognize, oh, that's a phrase. And once you've learned that phrase, You've already learned, you learned four bars, but you've actually learned six bars because the next are going to start the same way and with a slightly different ending. And then the B part, that's new. You've already learned that part. You already learned that part. That was the first part of the B part. By the time you've learned the first four bars of this tune, you've learned half the tune. Okay, and that's pretty typical with a lot of these simple tunes. Now, we're going to be going da. So you're just setting up this phrase. B, D, E, D. That's your opening. Let's just, let's just do that for a bit. Uh-oh, I introduced something. I'm putting a little cut in. Now, I'm cutting here, but this would be a better place to do it. I'm cutting with this finger here. Will you say the notes again, please? Those notes. D. E? I'm sorry? B is in boy. D. E. D. Thank you. I saw a discussion on a Facebook 
Tin Whistle group. I'll send you guys the link to the Facebook Tin Whistle group. It's, it's great. Mostly it's basically beginners and intermediate people and people post videos of, the, of themselves learning and playing tunes. And some guy posted, you know, nobody should use finger charts. They should just learn musical notation straight up. And I told the guy, I wrote back and said, I've been teaching music for 30 years. I've never had a single student reject finger charts. And I've had, and I've also never had a single student who already knew how to read music want to start by reading music. <laughs> you know, just no. It's like, no, you don't learn how to read before you can talk. All right. So B. So there's your opening statement. And the next part is now this is a little intellectual, which is hard, which is probably not a good idea when you're playing music. But what's about to happen here is you're going to go up the scale and then down the scale with a skip. Here's the skip. It's got a little kind of a hop to it. I'll play that slower. Put the two phrases together, nice and slow. Oh, deep breath. Yeah, I, uh, the back the the Indian unemployment thing. I <laughs> it's been quite an adventure, but I called um, today's Thursday. I called on Monday, and you get into the system, and you wait an hour for them to tell you that you can accept a callback instead of waiting. Cool. And that says, okay, it'll be approximately one hour. And then you keep listening. It says, or, or maybe tomorrow. It's like, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's, it, it'll be an hour or maybe tomorrow. So I wait two days. So I call them again, um, Wednesday, yesterday in the morning, wait for an hour. And then I get a recording saying, you're on a list to be called back at some point in the next 72 hours. So that's it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to speaking with Ellen. Believe me. Um, I get to laugh because if, if Indiana unemployment doesn't pay me, I'm not going to miss any meals. You know, I mean, I'll be okay. Uh, but there's some other people will miss meals because I won't be able to hire them to do things. Right. Steve's the economist. He understands this. All right. So. again. I want to show you something that little slide we were working on into the B works beautifully on this tune that I'm sliding up from the G that it gives this nice like yeah right instead of is fine but that little
Now I'm tossing in another thing just for your ear. I went to the second octave there just because you can and it, and it sometimes sounds fun. Okay, let's repeat this phrase again. Okay, that's, that's four bars. So now we're going to keep going with the A part of the tune. And you go right back to what you played before. So. So the only thing that's different about the second half of the A part of the tune is. Let's play the second half of the tune, which is starts the same way the tune starts. All right, so we should be able to play the whole A part of the tune now. Let's give it a go. So that's the A part of the tune. Okay, very nice. Now, the B part, the opening statement of the B part will be different, but the ending, the closing statements of the B part are going to be from the A part. So you've already learned three-fourths of the tune, even though it looks like you've only learned half of it, right? So here you go. I'll play it quickly. That should sound familiar, right? Because it's kind of sounds like the A part, but it's a little different. So, Can you name the different notes of the different part? Um, the, the, it's going to be it's going to be B, high D, D, A A, G, E, D. Thank you. But even that phrase, that's though that collection of notes is is happening in the A part. So it's all kind of becoming familiar. Now I want you to notice the way I'm I'm bouncing that exercise we did. Da 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 da. You don't have to do it that way. You could do the. You could do it with your tongue. You could cut that. Because you're playing the A twice in a row. You just need to figure out a way to interrupt it. Now, I, I like the sound. It just has this nice little bounce to it. Now, 
Now, it took me a long time to get that, that bounce. What tended to sound like was right? It just takes And if that's not working for you, don't worry about it. And for now, you can go. I use my tongue there. That's very musical. Probably the easiest way to do it now. You can also use your diaphragm. That's a very musical way to do it. I'm kind of cutting the sound off here like that in order to get that break. That's a nice musical lilt using using your throat or your diaphragm to get that stop because you know that's a doing this is a little down the road usually i would not introduce these sorts of techniques to my students until they've been with me for about a year <laughs> i would not be introducing that stuff in the first month okay but we have a mixed group here and some of you as you're listening to the music i want you to know that stuff is there but for now whatever technique works for you to get you know to get a musical sound go ahead right and also kind of the level of fun you're having in terms of like you might just fall in love with trying to do that and you know do, you know, you end up doing that instead of being on facebook for an hour you know you know i know i i feel better about myself if i do this instead of arguing with people that I don't know on Facebook. All right. <laughs> All right. So let's continue with the B part. Now notice the second half of that, we already know that phrase from the A part, right? Now we keep going. Wait a minute. We ended that the exact same way we're, we were ending the phrase in the A part. So the, the, the B part in this case is basically almost entirely made up of phrases that you know. It's kind of like memorizing a poem, but you've changed, like you have a verse or a phrase and you're just like mixing the phrases up and maybe changing a word here or there. So I'm, I'll play the, the B part again. Actually, I'm going to play the A part. Just kind of listen to it. And then listen to the B part as for, for phrases that you recognize. So I'm just going to play A. I'll play the A part once, and then I'll play the B part once. Now, I realize that you haven't heard this tune before. The hardest, um, and it's really, really tough to learn a tune when you don't have it in your head. So like the first challenge here is to, is to be hearing the melody. And that's a really frustrating thing to try to do when it's like, wait a minute, I can't hear the melody. I can't hear what's happening here. One of the reasons we started with is that tune is made up of pieces of phrases that actually are showing up in the tune we're playing now, right? That, that's, a, that's, a, that's called a sixth, the difference between those notes. That's a phrase that That the 
fact that we're we're coming down a scale one note at a time and then we go two notes instead of one that's one of the things that you're practicing learning how to hear in a tune like this so so we didn't just go we went instead of you went you learn to hear that after a while and you'll get better and better at hearing a tune that you've never heard before and being able to recognize the pieces of vocabulary that's in it that just comes that just comes with time and practice all right so we're at we're at seven o'clock but um i don't expect unemployment to call me back today so if you want let's take a just let's play through the whole tune a a b b nice and slowly I will make um, I'll make an instructional video that you know just nice little maybe 10 minutes going over that tune over and over um, and also get the uh, get uh, finger charts for it and I'll make sure John, I what, what's the name of it again what's the name of it again? I think that's britches full of stitches um, okay. I'm gonna have to make sure I have the name right as well um, there's a couple of polkas that I've been playing for a long time and the names start getting mixed up. Um, it might be, it might be, a, it might be Bill Sullivan's. I think it's either Bill Sullivan's or Britches Full of Stitches. That's one of the very first tunes that um, that I learned on the whistle. You know, my, my first tunes were things like the Sally Gardens. You know that airs, and then um, some of the waltzes. And kind of my first dance tune was. I love that. <laughs> hey, John. Yes, Steve. Steve here. Um, so, uh, when would you start the next sessions? And were they before weeks again, or? Yeah, I'm going to take one week, so there won't be a lesson next week. Um, next week, I'm offering individual classes to anybody who wants them. It's a chance for people who weren't in this workshop to basically, I could work with somebody and go, okay, you're ready. You should come into the second workshop, right? Um, make sure they have enough background. So if they take the second workshop, they're not just lost. Mm -hmm. um, and also anyone in this, because we've got people at various levels. Um, I could work with somebody individually. Um, you know, just, so we're taking a week and just doing that. And then it'll be the following week, Wednesdays again, for four sessions. And it'll, it'll be based on who we get to some extent. I mean, what I'd like to do um, is move into, say, more polkas. Um, probably learn another um, O'Carroll in tune, a slightly challenging, a little bit more challenging kind of waltzy air. Um, and a couple of polkas and depending how it goes, maybe a couple of jigs. Great. 
but it'll all depend on who we get, kind of who shows up. Hey, John, on the Sally Gardens, I think that's a really pretty tune. Do you have the music for that one? I can get that for you, yeah. That'd yeah. be awesome. I can send you a recording of it. Um, or uh, Seamus and my first band recorded that um, in the key of D. And um, I'm actually playing whistle on that recording, which is, I'm kind of amazed because I have a couple of whistle players in the band who are a lot better than I was. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the tunes on the recording where I'm playing whistle. Uh, I'm very, very happy uh, with that recording even 30 years later. Um, oh. yeah, I can send that to you. Do you want um, finger charts or notation or both? Both would be great. Okay. So when, you, when you're working with just finger charts, which I love, but it's hard to know, get a feel for the timing without, without music. Yeah. Not there. Pardon me? Yeah. Fit the whistle, the, the, the charts is just, there's a lot of information that's not there. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, the charts are just, um, people find them helpful. So, hey, sure. But you, you can't look at a finger chart and play the tune. Right. Unless you have the tune in your head, so that you know, um, you know, you know what the timing is. I I don't know if any of you if you guys um, saw in John in some of the links John sent. He this book was I don't know if you, can you see it. It's a <laughs> Tin Whistle Songbook. Do you have that, John? I ordered it, and I, the the cover is showing up as part of the moon. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why that is, but I, it was on the link that you sent, and I ordered it. it. Came from Ireland in about ten days, and it's really nice. It's got the music and the finger charts, uh, and it's got Irish songs and American songs and kids songs and Christmas songs. What's the I'm, name again? Called the Tin Whistle Songbook. Tin Whistles. Okay, great. Um, I don't know why I can't. There. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that is a wonderful book. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fun. Very, so. very, very good resource. I have a John, question. How, how, how common are whistle duets? Um, there's, um, look for, there's, there's a classic recording of, um, Patty Maloney and Sean Potts. Patty Maloney is the leader of the Chieftains. And Sean Potts is a very, very well-known musician in traditional circles who was one of the founding members of the Chieftains. They've got a, a duet uh, recording from, they recorded probably 40 years ago. It's just a blast. Absolutely extraordinary. You don't hear it, you don't hear it a lot. Um, Lunasa does some very nice things with dual whistles. Mm -hmm. uh, Michael McGoldrick and Brian Finnegan at the band at the same time. That was mind blowing stuff. Um, Fluke, which is one of the great, very modern, funky sounding bands, had a big influence on us. Um, they often have not so much two whistles as a flute and a whistle. Um, uh, the Fuchsia Band uh, does some very nice things with two whistles sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. It's more it's more likely to hear one whistle, but um, You'll hear you'll hear whistle duets. You have to go looking. Yeah, for I didn't know. I didn't know if it would drive you crazy. <laughs> um, uh, I, it's, I think it's, it's something a... that could be badly done. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose so. Um, like a tenor whistle and a low whistle together. Yeah. So there's music yeah. separation, or a whistle and a flute. Uh, but Sean Potts and uh, Patty Maloney, they're both playing tenor whistles. And um, they're playing harmonies and counterpoints, and it, it's just, it's an absolute treasure. It's a great recording. When you play, John, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, John, do you happen to have the uh, program Tabal Edit? I don't. Tabal Edit is, uh, it's a, well, it's a composition program. And I was introduced to it because of guitar, okay. but they actually have a module that it does tin whistle as well. Really? So you can put out you can put out all your notes and and it gives the finger charts, and you know it's pretty cool. 
What's it called again? Table Edit. I don't know how much it costs these days. When I first got it, it was only like 50 bucks, and all the updates have been free for at least 10 years now. But there's a lot of music out there, especially for guitar. And How do you spell it? T-A-B. It's like tab and then edit together. Tabel, tabel edit. T-A-B-L-E-D-I-T. They have a free version where you can look at, oh, but not pose with. But sounds great because you know, for me, I'm not quick at writing music out, mm -hmm. um, and writing out the filling out all the little holes with a pencil. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard. It's a lot of work, yeah. and I'm yeah. my brain doesn't process things like that very well, so I make mistakes. I I, I describe myself as a big picture guy. Mm -hmm. um, not a little picture guy, like putting the whole dots in the holes, you know, filling out forms, which is I'm sure why I'm having problems with um, unemployment. I'm sure I just didn't fill their forms out right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and everything I've seen so far is coming across really small. So that makes it harder too. I don't know if I'm exceptionally blind or No, or <laughs> no. see, this is what I did with Tablet Edit. I took, uh, come by the hills and oh. I just tab it in tab edit and it comes out you know a full page sort of thing wow. it's got the music and everything you know so you got your notation oh wow and then, then you could go in and if you want to emphasize something more there's you know dynamics you can put in and all kinds of stuff so see. But, thank you I will do that yeah I don't know why you're having trouble with the size of the things I'll yeah. Well, they come, I, out, they, they come out about this big. When yeah. You're... And I tried to enlarge it, but then they just get fuzzy. So. What the? Uh, I enlarged with Photoshop and, they, you know, and increased the uh, bits and all that kind of stuff. And it helped a little bit, but still. Yeah. I, I apologize for that. I'm looking at the file right here that I sent to you. And mm -hmm. on my screen, it's nice and big and it's clear. And as I increase its size, it's still clear. Wow. So there's something lost in translation. Um, in yeah, but I can figure. Well, that. I mean, I, it, I, it, I, if the dumb down the screen image gets a hold of it, it might reduce the uh, pixels or something yeah, to make it faster. Screen, than, it's when you print it out that it's small. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'll see if I can figure that out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, because no, yeah, having something like that. <laughs> That's, that's no good. But for any multi-instrumentalist, Tabel Edit is, is I think, really great because it does, it does mandolin, banjo. It, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Well, so. I'm, I'm, I'm already sold on it. I mean, I can already see it's going to help me out. The other the thing I would also recommend to any of you, um, I, I, I wrote this up in um, one of the emails, is I, I use... Um, software called any tune for slowing things down yeah you don't have to use any tune there's other software but any tune works i think it's like 15 dollars for a version on your phone i think it was 35 dollars for the version of my computer it only worked when i bought it which is about three years ago it only worked on apple but they were they said they were going to be releasing uh versions that would work um on, on other platforms it it sees my itunes library so Everything in my library, I can just open up any tune, boom, it's there. I can slow it down as much as I want. I can change the key. So if it's in a key that doesn't match what I'm playing it in, for just playing along and learning, it has completely changed the way I rehearse. Uh, um, I'll, I'll put a plug in for Strum Machine, too, okay. if you haven't heard about that. It does... Uh, your backup, you know, your strum um, guitar rhythm, a really nice sounding guitar. It has a, it, it has a lot of old time and bluegrass music, but you can put your own song in as well. It's free for two weeks and five dollars a month if you want to keep it, but they don't bother you in the two weeks that you're trying it out. I, I, I found it very useful as, as a mandolin player trying to get faster on the 
you know, melodies to have in a pandemic. It's been great. Awesome. I'd like to show you what I, the book that I got, The Whistle for Beginners, Tin Whistle for Beginners, comes with audio files for every song in the book. Nice. That, you download that one too. <laughs> yeah, it's wow. really good. So you can play along and hear what you're supposed to be playing. Boy, I've got I've got myself some dedicated students. <laughs> yes, you do. Well, this, this is why we're we're covering stuff that is that I frankly would frequently not cover until I was six months to even a year in. I mean, just I mean, even like you know, cuts and tips and stuff. I I might have a student for two years before I even mention that stuff. But I okay, tab tabel edit is fifty nine ninety seven U S. Um, for lifetime registration. For, because I would use it a lot, that's dirt cheap. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I would use it a lot. That would that that save me, that would be worth it just this week. Oh, <laughs> oh Yvonne. <laughs> well, the nice thing with it, with, with guitar or mandolin, you can put it in as... When you're you're putting the notes on the page, you can put them in as tab, like if you don't know the notation, or you can put them in as notation. So that's I like that versatility with it. But but if you do get it and you have any questions about it, I've been using it for a number of years now, so it can be kind of a little bit of a learning curve in the beginning, <laughs> just figuring out how to get it to do what. Well. The definition of old age is when you stop learning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. As long as you're as long as you're in love with learning, you you are still young. Yep. I I personally feel like I'm just getting started. Literally, as a musician, I am learning faster now than I was ever able to learn. Uh, which is like that's awesome. Yeah, for sure. I agree. <laughs> Everything else is getting worse. <laughs> Plus, I think your brain is formed around music anyway, so. There is that. But I'm surprised. I mean, there's, I'm finding myself capable of doing things now mentally, like hearing things in my head in ways that um, other musicians can do really easily. But it's like, it's coming to me now. Hmm. And, and it's coming faster and faster. Hmm. It's really... Um, just, just keep going. Just stay on the music road. Um, then, and would it, don't say to your, the one thing you want to be very, very careful about with yourself is telling yourself what it is you can't do. You have to be correct. Oh, yeah. I just had a hip replacement. I can't jump off a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Not suggested. <laughs> right. But, um, but I can get a um, a 32 foot ladder on top of my van, which I did today, and 32 mm -hmm. is a horse of a ladder. And you know, just nice and slow, nice and easy. Got it up on the truck and got it over to the house where my carpenter, my carpenter's 32 feet up in the air working on my gutters. Yeah, um, but with music. <laughs> I am now doing things musically that I had told myself 30 years ago I was incapable of doing. Oh. I told myself, oh, your hands can't do that. Your brain can't do that. You're not like that musician over there. You can't do that. And but I was wrong. And because I, I was wrong about that, I, um, I robbed myself of the opportunity to have learned that much, much sooner. Um, I didn't know how to learn music I didn't know how to spend my i didn't know how to study and how to rehearse i think i like to think that that makes me an effective teacher because i didn't have the experience of it just coming really easily to me so i i know how i know the struggle that many people have with it um i think what something comes very very easily to somebody um it can make it much harder for them to teach. Oh, yeah. I think that's my explanation for why mathematics is usually so badly taught. I agree. <laughs> hey, John, I got to go, but I'll see you at the next session. I'm going to take the next four. This is Steve. Awesome. Yep.
I'm Thanks. planning on it too. <laughs> I am too, but I'm going to have to miss the first class. All right. Well, they are, I'm hoping get, they're all recorded. So okay, good. I, I, Thank I, I, you. One and I'll yeah. put the down. We got to take off. All right. Thanks a lot. Call one up. Goodbye. Thank everybody. you very much. See you later, everybody. Take care. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It's been a great, great workshop. You bet. You too. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, John. Uh-huh.